good afternoon. Egypt has a new president. Mohamed Morsi, the Muslim Brotherhood candidate, took close to 52% of the vote over his rival, the former Prime Minister Ahmed Shafiq. This is the scene live in Tahrir Square, where hundreds of thousands of new president's supporters have been waiting all day to hear the result of last weekend's election. It had been delayed for three days while hundreds of complaints were assessed while well, Farouk Sultan, the chairman of the Electoral Commission, made the announcement just over an hour ago. The votes for each candidate is as follows. Dr. Ahmed Mohammed Shafiq Zaki, 12,347,380 votes, 12,347,380 votes, 380. The average of 48.27% of the votes. Dr. Mohammed Mohammed Morsi Isa Al Ayat, 13 million, 230,000. So if, if there is no silence, we will stop this press conference. You are journalists, you should respect this place. Vote cast, vote cast for Dr. Mohammed 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 Morsi Isa Al Ayat, 13 million, 230,000, i.e. 51.73%. So the winner of the post of the President of the Arab Republic of Egypt in the elections that took place on the 16th and 17th of June is Dr. Mohammed Mohammed Morsi Isa Al Ayat. Well, that was the moment when it was announced uh, Mohammed Morsi will become Egypt's first Islamist leader. Well, let's go live now to Tahrir Square and my colleague Lise Doucette, who is there. Lise. Well, these are momentous uh, times in Egypt, but as Shaima Halil makes clear, there are big questions ahead. What kind of power will the new president have? What will be his relationship with the Egyptian nation? And most of all, with the ruling military. You can see beneath me not just the huge crowds of people, but also the tents. They were put up as a protest against the army's taking of sweeping powers for itself more than a week ago. Mohamed Morsi will have to fashion a new relationship, not just with the people who supported him, but also with almost half of the nation who didn't. And what about the ruling military, which still is running the show? We're joined here by a very astute observer of Egyptian politics, the prominent writer Yasmin al-Rashidi, who wrote one of the, the first e-book on the revolution. Yasmin, you've been traveling a bit around Cairo today. How would you describe the mood? I think it's undoubtedly a mood of jubilation. People feel that symbolically this is a very important moment for Egypt, that the Egyptian people have chosen for the first time in their history a civilian president and that they've chosen to move away from the ruling staff. Mohamed Morsi described himself as a, a president. He'll be a leader of all Egyptians. He's promised a national unity government. He's already made a coalition with some of the liberal and secular forces. How hard will that be for Mohamed Morsi to be a president for all people? I think he has a great challenge ahead and that the staff has retained a lot of power limited
with what the president can actually do. There is also an understanding that he will be a transitional president. Um, and a lot of people are saying that that could mean that he's in office for just up to eight months or a year. Um, you know, I think, that, I think that the brotherhoods have to prove that they will stick to their word. And that is perhaps one of their challenges, and that people say that they have changed their word many times over the months. Um, and the cops today are definitely afraid of that, that it will happen again. If, as you say, they don't keep their word, what would be their agenda? Because they have tried to reach out to the minorities, as you said, the Christian cops, the women, other groups who may fear that they may try to turn Egypt, change its identity. I think that on, uh, the leaders, I think, you know, genuinely want a democratic Egypt, and I think that they understand that they have to work for a democratic Egypt. But there is a large contingency of the population, such as the Salafis, such as other Islamists, who I think will be pressuring them to turn this into a more conservative state, who want to, you know, change the nature, the, the cultural fabric of Egypt to make it more, more of an Islamic state. And yet many Egyptians say this is Egypt. Don't put other stereotypes upon us. Don't put other countries' expectations and histories upon us. That is correct, you know, and I think that, I think the great challenge to start with is dealing with the economy, is giving pe people better lives. And I think that they understand that that's what they have to focus on. And I think that if they're able to deliver that, then truly this is a good thing for Egypt. Yasmin El Rashidi, thank you very much for joining us on a very, very noisy day, but an extraordinary day here in Egypt as Egypt now comes to terms with its first elected president, Mohamed Morsi, a 60 year old American educated engineer who's played a leading role in the Muslim Brotherhood. It's part of what the army has promised a transfer to civilian rule. But that whole process was thrown into disarray by the dissolution of the freely elected parliament dominated by the Islamists more than a week ago and by the army taking sweeping powers for itself. Let's just take a look now at what kind of powers will Egypt's new president have. Since President Mubarak was ousted last year, the Supreme Council of the Armed Forces, known as SCAF, has been running Egypt. A week ago, the Supreme Constitutional Court, a legacy of the Mubarak era, dissolved the first freely elected parliament, dominated by Islamists. SCAF then issued a decree, giving itself sweeping legislative powers, including control over the military, the budget, and the drafting of a new constitution. The new president can choose his own cabinet, except the defense minister. But he's no longer the commander-in-chief who can declare war. That, like so much else, is up to the army, which has even chosen his new chief of staff. And that was, that's how the powers of the new president look. And what kind of power does the Muslim Brotherhood believe it's exercise? We're joined here by a founding member of the Freedom and Justice Party, a member of the Muslim Brotherhood, a very happy member. Just first, your reaction to what's happened today? Yeah, actually, it's a historical day in Egypt and for all the whole world, actually. Uh, at last, we have the first president of the revolution of 25th of January that blessed revolution. For the first time, Egyptians has the ability to choose and to elect the president that will represent their demands and their beliefs. Um, I'm so, so happy to the extent that I, I want to have hugs with all Egyptians right now, uh, women and men and every person here. Um, I know that all Egyptians right now here, they are all hand in hand together. Uh, they, they said here uh, a year and a half before that we have to uh, build a new Egypt with a new vision. Uh, we should uh, uh, really care about those the martyrs and to regain back the rights. And we should all together uh, work so that we rebuild Egypt. We should get rid of the last regime. And now, for the first time, we succeeded to do that. But we still have a lot of things to do. And I think that after today, we have to continue the demands, our demands. As you know, you said you wanted to hug all Egyptians, but not all Egyptians are hugging the Muslim <laughs> Brotherhood. What, yeah. what is your message to half yes. of the nation, which didn't vote yeah. for, for Mohamed Morsi, which distrust and some fear Mohamed Morsi? Uh, um, I don't want to tell you that. We said that today in our press conference, that uh, it was a, 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 a historical day, and it's a good day for both those who voted for Dr. Morsi and those also who voted 
for uh, uh, Mr. Ahmed Shafiq. Uh, all of them are Egyptians. They care about Egypt. They want the best for the Egyptians. We are all together. We have to work together later on. Maybe we have different points of view, but doesn't mean that there is a problem between each other. Uh, they were having their own dreams, and also we want to fulfill our dreams. Together, we will continue to fulfill our dreams. So what is the first priority for the Muslim Brotherhood and those who say to you, you must put not ideology first, but yes. Egypt first? Yeah. Talk about Dr. Morsi, he said and promised that he will resign from Freedom Justice Party. And actually, also, he will not just be an official member from Muslim Brotherhood. He will be president for all Egyptians. We said to all Egyptians as Muslim, I'm, I'm still in Muslim Brotherhood. I want to tell them that we as a movement were always working for the sake of Egypt. We were struggling for, to, for people to regain back our freedom, all of us. Now we have to continue all together. It's not a matter of ideology, it's just a matter of aims and dreams that we have together connect to fulfill. And I have to ask you, because as you say, you're one of the sisters of, of the Muslim Brotherhood. Yes. The sister, you, anyone who comes to Egypt knows the secular fabric is one of its strengths. Some are veiled, some are not veiled, some are working, some are not working. Yes. Is this something that can be kept in Egypt's future? We will not interfere in personal life of every person. A woman who wants to wear a veil, she's free. And the one who will not, she's free. We are going uh, to work to have a real state of law. It's not a state that will interfere in people's uh, life. We believe that women should work. She should also improve herself and her activities and her abilities. She has to work beside the man because she is not half society, as most people said. She's all society from my own point, point of view. 50% of Muslim, uh, Muslim Brotherhood are from women. And we are specialized in different fields. And we are amongst people. And so we believe that all together we respect the other's point of view uh, one of our strength point of view or one of our strength points is that we are different that's a strength point it's not we, we cannot be all together the same but we shall work together in the next period and to forget about ideology and beliefs and so on and look at those tents down there that's a sit-in against army rule when how long is that going to continue uh, talking about sitting in the square that we will continue sitting in Tahrir Square because uh, the present election is not the last demand. It's the first demand that after which, well, after we uh, fulfill it as we did right today, we have to continue our demands. We should uh, held over power from the sky, from the military power. We should have our own constitution that will really uh, 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 express people's uh, beliefs and dreams. Uh, we, don't want, we don't want another um, uh, about the intensive law and uh, what uh, the, the, the court mentioned. We should regain back uh, the parliament because we believe that the president should uh, say his oath in front of the parliament. It's the only official way that we will believe in. He should give this oath in front of all these people, those protesters and those Egyptians all together hand in hand. Dima, thank you very much. I know you. your, your smile says it all, what you're feeling right now. Thank you very much for joining us on the BBC to tell about with your reaction, but also the promises and the plans of the Muslim Brotherhood. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you for getting, getting, giving me this chance to celebrate with you that uh, uh, amazing day. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Well, our thanks to Lise Doucette and her guests. You can really get the sense of the continuing jubilation there, the cheers, the flag waving, the horn blowing, some two hours after that announcement that the Muslim Brotherhood candidate, Mohamed Morsi, had been declared the first elected president of post-revolutionary Egypt. And the celebrations there in Tahrir Square, the iconic scene, of course, of last year's protest to oust President Mubarak continue. There were suspicions amongst many of those people that you see celebrating there because of that three-day delay. They're expecting the results on Thursday. They have waited and waited because there were hundreds of complaints following that election. But that delay really raised suspicions that the outcome was going to be a negotiated outcome rather than one that had been counted. But those results released some 51.7% of the vote, and Egypt has a new president. It will be a new chapter in Egyptian history. Well, the time now, 16 minutes past five.